happy to have in studio this morning from the Office of Emergency Management, Ross McDowell. Additionally, we've got Paula Nichols here. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Hey. I like your energy already, Paula. <laughs> do you? I do. Well, you know, it comes from rescuing animals. Let's talk about this. You're here today to talk about DART, and uh, it is a little less than a year going on now. So what is DART, and how did you get involved with it? DART is the Disaster Animal Rescue Team of Mason County. Okay. It is brand new, and we started last year um, during the Deckerville fires. Do you remember yeah, those? Yeah, yeah. And it was horrific. Within minutes, five structures were lost. Fifteen minutes, because the grass... There's a lot of grazing land up there, and it was just dry as could be. I remember that. So it was horrific, just horrible. Eight structures total were lost. Oh, my gosh. So um, I called up a friend of mine, and I said, you know, I belong to a ladies' riding club, the, uh, the equestrians, and we have a lot of ladies with trailers, trucks, all the facility to, to pick up uh, large and small animals. Do you need our help? And Donnie from Mason 16 Fire District said, we don't know what to do. We need help. We don't have anything. So we went up there and we staged an area at the Matlock General Store. Uh -huh. And then one at a time we went in as needed and rescued some of the animals. Wow. And then out of that, we realized, you know, there's nothing in Mason County. And it's pretty serious. There is not a things set up to rescue people's animals in a disaster. Yeah. So uh, about a month later, um, in September, um, I drew up a proposal for the uh, commissioners of the fire districts, and I went in. They were gracious enough to receive us very well, and they brought in Ross. Hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is a miraculous thing because a previous attempt had been made several years ago to form a unit such as ours, but it's Ross that brought us under the umbrella of the Department of Emergency Management. For sure. And it's really led to part of our extreme success. Well, cool. Yeah. yeah it's a great group. It is a fantastic group. You talk about people with heart. Yeah. Oh, my. So this is a group. On that day, how many animals were you able to get out of there? Well, I think we got about 10 animals total. Wow. There were a couple that refused to get in the trailer, unfortunately. Sure. However, there was a herd of cows that went missing. <laughs> and, and we were told that they were lost, that they were gone. They were deceased. Uh -huh. But I couldn't find any carcasses. And, you know, cows are pretty big. They are. So <laughs> for three days, I personally hunted, combed the forest, the, the whole area, didn't find the cows. Finally, on the last day that I was searching, I found a neighbor who had gone rogue, had gone around the firemen, had cut the fences on the back side, and herded those cows to her front lawn. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so they wow, were saved. That They're, was a great story. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. How many animals do you think are in the county that could be affected by this? I mean, like oh, the thousands. horses and, and people. People have tons of animals in this. Yeah, thousands. More, more than just horses. That's the one thing. Oh, that yeah. Kind there's of llamas. There's cows. There's goats, chickens, pigs. You name it. Sheep. Then domestics, too. A lot on of top sheep. of that with your yep. you know, dogs, cats. Dogs, you know, cats. You oh, name yeah. it. That are people's pets that, you know, when it comes to time of emergency and you got to move out and go, you need to be prepared and ready to go with those guys. And sometimes people are just not. I right. mean, you got, you know, we have people out there with eight and ten dogs. Do they have eight or ten crates for those dogs to get them out yeah. there? Can they get them all together, you know? And that's where we can come in and help out with that. And how, how are you set up uh, to do that? So there's maybe, hopefully not, a fire breaks out. Mm-hmm. Are you, like, on the call tree and they immediately contact yes. you to have you set up, come out there and check it out to see if there's some kind of situation that you can help with? Absolutely. I am on the dispatch list, so they would call me personally, and then I would alert my team, and we would first send out a reconnaissance as we were packing up to see, to assess the situation, see how many animals there are, look at the ingrate 
grass and egress of uh -huh. the situation. Are there any barriers for our trucks and trailers? Is there a place to get in, get out, right? So then we would stay, set up a staging area near the fire and we would go in as needed. And I have ladies that, and their husbands, we now have men because we recruited our husbands. Yeah, Yay, guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so we would go in and um, see, do we have enough trailers to take them all? If not, we'll set up a pen, emergency pens, to away from the danger to put to house the horses, the big animals mainly. Small animals, I'm sure everybody, you know, we have a lot of crates and things. Sure. But we need donations. And we need help from the community. I bet. You mentioned a team, but like how many are in your team? And Right now we have um, 20 members mm -hmm. and we have 10 that are uh, able to go out on calls with 10 trucks and trailers. We need a lot more because if we have, this is a brand new team mm -hmm. and we had to go through extensive training all winter. I, bet. I went up and took the state training with another lady, Jody, and um, then I've been teaching our team all winter long. Now these are people that are used to being around horses so I kind of knew, and they're friends of mine, so I kind of knew that they knew a lot, but we had to take helicopter training, mm -hmm. first aid training, um, all the FEMA training. Sure. You know, what else oh, did yeah. we take on your end? Oh, my. We've, what they have done, they've done everything to be a search and rescue group, sort of like what the sheriff does have, right. in order for them to be covered by the state mm -hmm. for going out on these missions. But they have to make sure that they qualify for that, plus everything to do with all these different kinds of animals. Yeah. So they had, uh, I think there's eight different ones, map and compass. They have to learn all that. Wow. They have to do all these mm -hmm. things that you would do. If you're a regular ground pounder for, for uh, search and rescue, they did so that they are covered by that under the state. Under oh, the that's great. And yeah. the great thing about that is that we are insured. Yeah. So under that mission number. Under the mission number. That mm -hmm. If they're out there doing doing their job, their, their position as volunteers going out to get those animals, you know, if something does happen, the state will help cover them if something does go wrong for them. That's so, correct. Yeah. So, uh, DART's not a 501c3. It's part of the yeah. it's part of the county uh, system here now. And, but but people still are able to donate. What do you need, and how do they do that? Well, they can't donate money. However, Dells has a thing set up with us that they can donate onto a card at Dells, food, and things like oh, that. Oh, great! Can, they can donate money to Dells. And, or tractor supply, whatever it's called now. <laughs> but we need things like volunteers. Sure. We need volunteers in any aspect. They don't have to be going out and rescue the animals, although we need those too. We would love it if we had clerical people because I'm not so great at this paper thing. <laughs> and I'm doing it all right now because nobody else wanted to volunteer for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need help in that direction, please. And organizational things, you know, all that type of things. We also need people to be able to come forward and say, I can place this many animals and this type of animal should the need arise. Oh, sure. Now, the other thing is we need kennels. We need um, livestock panels. That is a very important thing. We need ropes and halters and collars. Uh, collars, uh, not collars to call up at the phone, collars around your neck <laughs> for a dog, yeah. you know. Um, and we have all our personal safety equipment, which generously DEM has provided some of that for us. And then on our own, we've done our own thing. And um, so please contact me and I'll give you my phone number. Uh-oh, am I in trouble for doing this? 360-490-3476. And or you can call the um, emergency management number which is 360-427-7535 okay good so we we would really like that this is one of those things where it's it's an offshoot of of emergency management but we know there's a lot of people out there who were into the animals or their animals have passed and they have this just laying around sure you know mm -hmm. and and if if it can go to good use 
that's a great thing to, to sit there and say, hey, here you go for guys. You can you can use this. You can use our, our stuff. You can have it. It's uh, this this group is a great group. I got to say that this is one of the fun fun groups that I've worked with. <laughs> the ladies are really nice, and the guys. The guys are, are nice really too. nice. But you talk about a drive. Sure, they're all driven to take care of this. It's an eye opener for me. I'm a city boy. I don't know a lot about animals. It was an awakening for me of, hey, here's here's how you deal with some of these animals that are out there. And there's quite a, a vast amount of knowledge that's there, but we can always use more. And, and we, we will train people. them. And yeah. we will train. They oh, get they free, training, free training. Free mm -hmm. CPR training and huh. first aid. Mm -hmm. They get to do all the FEMA IC training. Oh, those are riveting. Those yeah, are oh, those yeah. are really riveting. <laughs> Ross put those on, and they're very riveting. He's yeah. an excellent speaker and trainer. Trainer, if I should say that. Um, the also the other thing is the applicants must pass a background check. Okay. Now, if they've done something in their past and they want to talk to us about it, you know mm -hmm. that's fine. It's mm -hmm. you know, yeah. As long as it's, it's not mass murder or right. something. You know, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. There's some stipulations. There's there. a little. We yeah. have you know yeah. we have standards, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> But, standards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but right, jumping standards, that's yeah, what that's I think of, you know, because I'm yeah. a horse person, so that's what I think of. But, you know, we actually just finished two weekends ago, we did a horse trailer loading exercise. And this is, we met at Lori and Ken Reinertsen's. I have to give them a plug. They're members of our team, but they were gracious enough to open their beautiful home to us and all their fields. And we brought all our trailers in and we practiced loading other people's horses into oh. our trailers because especially during a disaster those animals are going to be stressed yeah. and so we wanted to make sure that we could get them in so we each brought one horse some people brought three and we practice loading other people's horses now i have a straight load trailer for anyone who knows anything about horses straight load trailers are very hard to load being the leader of this unit which ross made me thank you very much um I was particularly hoping that these horses would get in my trailer, because how embarrassing would that have been? Sure. You know, <laughs> everybody else gets them in, and I don't. Right? I wouldn't have a chance with the horses. I, I just don't speak horse, well, and yeah. it just doesn't work well for Yeah, me. you could, though, because I use bribery. Yeah. I mean, food is you know, a great motivating hey, tool with me. these horses. Yeah. <laughs> me too, but let's not go there. <laughs> so you just sort of show them that there's food up front uh -huh. and in a straight load there's a there's a place up front where there's a shelf where you can put the food and you show them it's up there and then hopefully and you know the hardest horse only took five minutes oh that's good which is pretty darn good yeah well pj and ross we're just about out of time but again uh pj's cell phone number you don't mind me giving it out again oh here. please do 360 490-3476, or you can call the emergency management number, the office there, 427-7535, looking for volunteers and donations for the Disaster Animal Rescue Team. Right. Thanks Dart. for... No, Dart. Lovely Dart. Thanks Dart. for coming in today and telling us about this. Hey, thank you. Thanks for helping Very us out on this. Oh, this yeah. Is, this is an important thing for our community. Mm -hmm. for it sure. really is. And thank you so much for allowing us to beg for help. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is time for ABC News. You're listening to KMAS Shelton. Darn Chase. The big board at the New York Stock Exchange lit up in green at the opening bell as stocks opened solidly higher. It's just the latest market to show signs of stability after two days.